I sat at this table and I wrote a letter to my senator telling him I wanted to fly fighter jets in combat, to fight for my country, and that women should be able to do that. He never wrote back. That senator that didn't write back was Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, and the letter writer is his likely 2020 Democratic challenger, Amy McGrath, a retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel and one of the first women to fly a combat mission in the F-A-18 fighter jet. She's going to run to unseat McConnell in Kentucky. It's a state he's served for more than three decades. McGrath lost a close race for the House last year, but proved to be a prolific fundraiser. She was recruited to run for this seat uh, by Chuck Schumer and others. Amy McGrath joins me now. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, thanks for, thanks for joining us. I guess the, the first question I have is, President Trump won Kentucky by 30 points in 2016. He's going to be on the top of the ticket. Next year, you lost a, a House race in a Democratic wave season. You came close, but you didn't get to cross the finish line. What makes you think you can beat McConnell in what will probably be uh, a more difficult environment? Mm -hmm. Well, you're right to say that uh, Senator McConnell is a very formidable foe. Um, I think if you think about why Kentuckians voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump promised to drain the swamp, bring back jobs, uh, do big things in infrastructure, do things like re uh, bring down drug prices. And a lot of these things are being uh, halted by Senator McConnell. You know, for example, drug prices. You know, President Trump has said this is his priority. He said the current system is very, very unfair. And this is important for Kentucky. Kentucky has the second highest uh, uh, per capita spending on prescription drug medication, over $2,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And who's stopping President Trump from doing this? Senator McConnell, because he's bought off by Big Pharma. I mean, he gets $1.2 million yeah. in campaign cash in his last election. It's not rocket science. Uh, this is what's happening, and a lot of Kentuckians know this. So this, this pitch that you're saying right now, um, which you said earlier today, uh, prompted the Louisville Courier-Journal, uh, one of your home state papers, to say that you seem to be casting yourself as, as a pro-Trump Democrat in ways, uh, saying McConnell's the, the reason that a lot of things Trump promised to Kentuckians hasn't happened. Um, is that a fair depiction? You know, I would say that um, I understand why the voters in Kentucky voted for Donald Trump. They are tired of the swamp. They are tired of the dysfunction. Frankly, voters in Kentucky uh, really don't like both political parties. They think that's part of the problem. And folks like Senator McConnell, who have been around for 34 years, are not the answer. And I think many Kentuckians are seeing that. And that was a lot of the appeal of Donald Trump. He was an outsider. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what I'm trying to say. I'm an outsider, too. I'm not someone who ever believed I was going to be a politician. Uh, Jake, I just wanted to serve my country. Right. I, I had this dream. I wanted to fly fighter jets, and that's what I did. And along the way, I met my husband, a Navy pilot, and we got married. We have three kids, and it's amazing. But we both looked at each other over the last three years, like many Americans and many Kentuckians, and we've said, you know, hey, we need better leaders in this country. And there's no uh, better example of that than in Kentucky. So I, I can understand certainly why you're talking about how you understand why Kentuckians voted for Donald Trump in such overwhelming numbers. Mm -hmm. But it has been pointed out that you once compared the feeling you had uh, when President Trump was elected to the feeling you had on 9-11. Uh, won't that undermine the pitch, you think? Well, what I was talking about was the fact that, you know, um, nobody really expected um, President Trump to win. And I was talking also about the entire 2016 cycle. You know, many of us um, were spurred into action by what happened in 2016, the labeling of each other as they're all communist or they're all this or they're all that. And the fake news, the divisiveness of our country was something I had never seen before. You know, my husband is a Republican. I'm a Democrat. We took stock of that after the election and we said, you know, where, where are we as a country? And that way, it was the same thing for me was, was looking at, at that tragic event and taking stock of where are we as a country. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I was saying. And I, and I can see why, um, you know, folks might be upset about that. But that's what I was saying. All right, Lieutenant Colonel Amy McGrath, we thank you for your service. Uh, good luck out there on the campaign trail. Great to have you.